Number 11 then from paper 2 of the 2022 National 5. Three mark question again. You've got a cuboid and you have to calculate the length of a space diagonal. Now it's not a diagonal that lies in one of the faces of it, but the diagonal that goes from one corner to an opposite corner through the space inside the cuboid. Now the way you put down the answers this year will be affected by the fact that vectors have been missed out this year. Because otherwise you could just have said, well, if you want the length of that line EC, you could just have stated, and it saves a lot of Pythagoras and explanations, you could have stated the components of the vector EC just by saying it goes 24 along, 6 back, and 8 up. 24, 6, 8, because that would have been the first mark. And then you could have gone on to say that the length of the line EC, in other words, the magnitude of that vector, because it's just a formula used for that, would be the square root of 24 squared plus 6 squared plus 8 squared, and then press the buttons and go 26 and put the units in centimetres. And those would have been the three marks. So this year you'll have to do it the long way and find routes that will take you there by calculating intermediate parts. So that to work out the length of EC, you'd want it to be part of a right angle triangle. Well, if you just dropped that down, you'd have the triangle EGC. And then you could work out the length of EG from the horizontal base triangle, EHG. So you could work it out this way. You could say, well, if I work along the base from E to H to G, so that's a 24 and a 6, you could use Pythagoras to work it out. You could do this. You could say, oh, EG is going to be 24 squared plus 6 squared, and then just carry on with that. 576 plus 36 which is 612, and even work it out, that's eg squared of course, and then get the square root of 612, which is 24.738 and so on, and then use that in the next part. Now that you know the length of this line, you could do Pythagoras with that number and the 8, however that would just be a complete waste of time as well as introducing inaccuracies by having to round this number off. But you're better just leaving EG squared alone like this and transferring that to the next part. So that'd be the first mark. You could choose a different route, of course, to get there. You don't need to take that triangle, first of all. You could have worked up here, but that's probably what you would look at. Now transfer that into the triangle you actually want, which is this triangle. The one that goes from E to C, the via the G. Now in this triangle you know that height is 8 and you know the EG. Well you don't know the EG specifically though I did work it out but you don't want EG anyway you want the square of it and you know the square of it. So now you can say this EC squared will be EG squared plus the 8 squared but you knew that was just 24 squared and 6 squared and 8 squared. Now, doing that gets a mark. If you'd worked out the intermediate answer and put it in here and squared it, you'd still get it. But it's more sensible just to leave it alone. In other words, keep it exact. Saves a lot of working. And then go on and find EC by doing the square root of whatever that lot comes to. So that comes to 676. And then do square root. And you get 26, don't forget the units, centimetres, which gets the final mark. And you might think, oh, that's nice and neat. Normally when you do Pythagoras and square roots, especially with those three numbers there, you expect a nasty number as an answer. But the reason for that is they've chosen a couple of Pythagorean triples here. Look, the six and the eight. Six and eight for two sides. Six squared and eight squared makes ten squared. That's a three, four, five triangle doubled up. And once you've got the 10 squared, you've got a 10 squared and a 24 squared. Well, that's double a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So the answer should be double the 13, which is 26. Number 12 then, again for three marks, this time a nice little bit of algebra. So 
none of the rounding off, I always prefer the ones that are just algebraic or geometric rather than ones where you've got to do calculations and then worry about rounding things off and having to write loads of figures. Nice, neat, clean algebra here. Simplify this expression for three marks. Well, since it's a fractional expression, it's really going to be about, if it can be simplified, it means you can do some cancelling. There should be something that will divide out from the top and the bottom. So the first step will be factorise it to make it into products, because it's only products that you can cancel out. Well, what have we got on top? There's a 2 in common, I'll take that out. There's an A in common, I'll take that out. And that leaves just a B to a B to make this one. And I've taken out the A, so it just leaves a 3. So I've got a B plus a 3. So that's the top done. Now the bottom. B squared minus 9. Well, that's the difference of two squares. B minus 3. B plus 3. Those will be the first two marks. One for factorising the top. One for factorising the denominator. And then those two parts can divide out leaving just a 2a on top and a b-3 underneath for the final mark.